episode 37. Let's do this. This is the business of architecture. Helping architects conquer the world. And here's your host, Enoch Sears. Welcome back, Architect Nation. Hey, I just, first of all, I have to thank Charles. Thank you so much for leaving me a review on iTunes. It didn't hurt that it's also a five-star review. That's kind of nice. So, you know, Charles says, this podcast is extremely helpful and valuable for any architect wanting to improve his business or start his or her own firm. And I definitely hope that is the case. That is the kind of information I'm trying to bring to you. Charles, thanks for doing that. And just let me know where I send the special bribe. So just wanted to check in with you. You know, it has been a great, great 2013 for me. Now, I started this podcast, this Business of Architecture show, at the beginning of, actually at the end of 2012 with my first interview with Osha Wilson. Kicked it off great. Osha had an amazing interview talking about what it takes to start an architecture firm, what it takes to run a firm, and the finances needed to start up. And it has just been a wild ride. I have interviewed so many wonderful people over the past year that I've just had the privilege of talking to. I have learned so much. I hope you've learned a lot too. And I am very glad and proud to bring you the last episode of 2013. This is the second part of my interview with architect and former managing director of the AIA Marketing and Business Development Department, Mr. Kyle McAdams, AIA. So in this second episode, we talk a little bit more about you know, what it means to market yourself as an architect. And, you know, some of the things that marketing students learn during the college years that us architects, when we're, you know, have our heads down building chipboard models and focusing on, you know, transparent spaces and, and, and phenomenal transparency, you know, these are the things we miss. So I just hope you enjoy this episode. I really enjoyed talking with Kyle during this time. And I learned a lot. And I hope you get something out of this that will help you in your firm. Now, also, I want to say, you know, at the end of the year here, drop on by over there to iTunes. Leave it. Leave me a review, you know, even if it's if and if they're, you know, if it's a two star, three star, whatever, I'm not going to be hurt. I just want some positive or negative, whatever. I want some feedback so I can, you know, feel like I'm not an echo chamber here and get an idea for what you all think about the episode so I can make it better and bring you the kind of information that's going to help you have success as an architect. So without further ado, here's the show, part two of my interview with architect Kyle McAdams. Well, welcome back, Agile Architects, to our second episode. We're joined today by licensed architect and former managing director of marketing and business development for the National American Institute of Architects, Kyle McAdams. And he is, in his own words, an evil marketing genius. And as you listen today, you'll find out why. So, Kyle, are you going to share your evil secrets with us today? That's all I'm here for. Uh, just don't tell anybody. Uh, but these are, you know, it's funny. Uh, you, we make, you make it sound like evil secrets. These are actually like, uh, you know, basic, very uh, uh, core marketing, um, like the ABCs of marketing, really. It's just that. You know, in the architectural education, it's just not, uh, we don't ever get there. We don't have the time. We spend so much time in design. that This is really uh, like speaking English in, in an English-speaking country. Um, it, you know, if any of my former business school colleagues were watching this, they'd be like, duh. <laughs> like, wow, that was insightful, Kyle. Um, but, you know, it's just that, yeah. It, they thought I was crazy when I talk about uh, structures in in uh, in business school because architects are like, well, of course it's a concrete structure, duh. But my business school colleagues is like, wow, what, what what do you mean by that? So uh, it's all about what you're taught. Well, exactly, and you're you're a you are a business development executive, and you have you have a career of experience in marketing. And so, yes. you know, as architects, we're, we're technicians, we're people that we get and we understand architecture. And so a lot of times, like you said, the ABCs are revelatory for us because we didn't go to business school and we didn't have that grounding. And it, it honestly takes time to get that. So thank you for coming and sharing that experience with us, especially since you can speak to it from an architect's uh, um, perspective. That's actually very rare. And so it's, it's wonderful to have you on the show. 
Thanks. That's why I'm an evil genius. <laughs> <laughs> so last time we talked about the three C's of, of marketing and the four P's. And we talked about how so much effort goes into, before even we start promoting, there's a lot of background effort that goes into understanding the market and positioning ourselves and making sure that we have all of our ABCs, so to speak, in the right order. Right. And then today, we promised that we would talk to him a little bit about the funnel a little bit about the pipeline. And I'd like yes. to start out with some stories about your early career working for a firm that did some school district work. And then can you tie that into the funnel with us and sort of explain where do we go from here? We've done our promotion. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and um, I brought a visual aid with me today. This is my funnel from my kitchen. Very nice. Uh, Yes. I like that. That's actually going to help those people who listen by podcast. It's going to give them incentive to come on and watch the video because now they're wondering, what is what is Kyle holding up? Yeah, you're only getting 50% of the experience. So, so describe uh, so, it to us. What is okay. it for those people who can't see it? It is a funnel. It's a white funnel. Um, looks very classic. Uh, has nice proportions to it. Um, but it's here to represent something. And I think we, you know, I've looked at some, some uh, of the past. Uh, episodes of Enix, and um, we talked about, various people have talked about the funnel, but there's different ways to think about the funnel. But the funnel is meant to represent the entire process going from the big end of the funnel down to the small end of the funnel of, of getting clients through that funnel and getting them to the point where they're actually hiring you and paying you. Uh, Assume that the big end of the funnel is the starting point, but actually it's not. Uh, the big end of the funnel is just uh, the point at which you're saying this is the uh, the people that are in the uh, customer grouping that I want to talk about. So think about this outside the funnel, out in the open air, is the world, is the public of every potential person, client, uh, product, in the world, and you really don't want to talk to all those people. You'll be wasting, uh, you know, 99% of your marketing dollars trying to talk to them. But people that are in this world, let's say, uh, you know, given my experience with working in Austin, uh, very first job in an architecture firm in Austin, uh, trying to find schoolwork, uh, you know, designing schools for the firm I was working in. So our funnel was people involved in schools uh, in a 200-mile radius of Austin, Texas. So that, that narrowed, that began our funnel there. Uh, so starting with that funnel, we've got we to say, okay, first you have to build awareness of these people in this funnel because this funnel is really representing uh, a decision-making process to the point where, you know, from the big end to the small end, you're trying to, to guide people along a line of understanding and awareness and consideration of you as uh, a service and why they should select you. Not everybody, you know, a lot of architects are spending their time trying to find this person at the small end. It's like, hey, you know, you need architectural service? And they're like, well, I think I might, but uh, who the hell are you? Uh, so that's why you have to get to, to bring people in the funnel and bring them down gradually. Part of it is building awareness. And building awareness uh, means, do, are you in the heads of the people who make these decisions that you even exist? And uh, they might even recall you were being a service or you being an architect or you being an, an ADA expert. Uh, how are you going to build that awareness? And this is where you have to invest some time, which doesn't have immediate payoff. And you have to realize that you're basically just laying the groundwork uh, for future clients. You may luck out and one of them may, you know, day one be ready to roll, but the vast majority won't be there. And so you've got to figure out, how am I going to build awareness? Um, you know, if you're Coca-Cola, you can just uh, basically load up all of the air with commercials all the time, and people will build that awareness. It also happens to help to be a hundred and something year old brand be able to do that. Uh, most of us uh, aren't there, and uh, most of us don't have the budget to do that. So we have to figure out how to build awareness and filter it among the audience that we're uh, hoping to serve. And so you need to think 
creatively about how to do that. In terms of, uh, of people in, in involved in schools, you can think of the kinds of organizations where you can find those people who might be in the uh, awareness of uh, potentially um, school projects coming down the pipeline. So that could be things like school boards and PTAs, um, you know, maybe things like you know, high school coaches or, uh, I don't know, special education groups, uh, you know, online sessions with moms talking about uh, school. We can find just, if you think in terms of who would be uh, interested, who would be, if not the decision maker, an influence of the decision maker, and how do I get among that audience? And not necessarily saying, hey, uh, hire me to make a, uh, a school for you, but rather, how do you make the entry and look like a person they want to work with, right? I, I said it last time is, uh, people like to work with people they like. So how do you become a person they like and a person they uh, associate uh, solving school needs with? So you might think of, like, how do I get leads? How do I uh, provide something free, something interesting, something innovative to this group. Maybe it's uh, giving presentations. So, you know, like, I don't know, Lions Clubs, PTAs are always looking for uh, content to be talking about, whether it be on their website, whether it be in their meetings. Uh, try to get engaged and have, you know, your name known so that they're like saying, oh, you know, what was that architect guy who talked to us about uh, ADA compliance in schools? I've got his card right here. Uh, and, it, and it may not be the decision maker, but it may be, you know, the mom who has uh, a complaint to the schools about the ADA for her uh, um, son who is in need of, uh, of, you know, wider turning radius bathrooms or something like that. Um, but making that yourself known there, and it might be, you know, saying things simply as, these are key issues with schools to consider, or these are the the uh, key innovations to consider, um, but it could be white papers, it could be presentations, uh, anything that can get you in the conversation and, make, and position you as sort of an expert helping um, the local community. Uh, and there are a lot of local communities out there. So you've got to be in a lot of places and that you have to decide where do I want to work and to limit where you're spending your time. But you've got to do the investment up front, but once you build awareness, then as things progress, uh, you, you, you know, when you come back, when you see like, oh, I just, I just saw that there's a bond referendum on new schools. Now when you come back to that school district uh, and say, hey, I see there's a new referendum on the school, where the RFP is going to be at? They're like, oh yeah, this is the guy who came to us before. Um, we're, going to consider, we're going to have you considered in the RFP process, right? And if they already have a, a, a positive uh, feeling about you, then you might already be on the short list for all you know. Uh, but continuing that conversation, having yourself uh, thought of as an expert in the, the field uh, will be a big help as opposed to just coming out of the blue, uh, trying to sell them right here down the end of the pipeline. Um, and then, you know, the pipeline gets shorter, but the more you're engaged there and the more that you know the needs of the community, um, then the more likely you'll be to be at the end of that pipeline uh, and getting the job. Now, something to also remember is once you do get the job, once you've completed the job, stay in contact with those people. Uh, they're the most likely to be spreading the word about you to others uh, to hire you in the future or, <laughs> and I would say hopefully, do a good job because if you don't, they're going to be the ones complaining to everybody else uh, about um, you not being a good provider. So that's the funnel, is really spending the time uh, at the wide end of the funnel where there's not a whole lot of payoff immediately, but what you're doing is you're preparing the ground. I think you and I talked about earlier, it's kind of like you're seeding your vineyard, right? It's going to be a while, a long while, before those vines become old enough they may already be producing grapes, but the grapes may not be old enough to be sweet enough to make wine yet. So what you're doing is you are planting the groundwork uh, to pay dividends down the line.
and uh, it, it's a process that you have to continue on, right? You don't stop doing awareness building. You don't say, okay, I did awareness building last year. Awareness building is every time you can have the opportunity, you do it. And you need to think about it as if it was a piece of design. A piece of, you know, it's just as important as any design you do because it really is the very, very, very first step in a design project is building awareness to even be considered to uh, do the design. Okay. So, so you're mapping out here, this is a basically a system. So what you're talking about here is a marketing system of A leads to B, B leads to C, C leads, and then we go down the line. And I'm really curious um, to our audience members who are listening out there, I'm curious if you feel as an architect that you have a systematic approach to marketing or whether you feel your marketing is more haphazard. So give us some feedback. Come to the blog show page. Post your comment. Tweet at Business of Architecture. That's actually at Business of Arch. And, and Kyle, your, your Twitter handle is? Uh, I'm going blank. I think it's uh, K McAdams one, I believe. I'm blanking on it right now. Okay. Um, so l look up Kyle McAdams on Twitter. Give us a shout out. Let us know if your if you feel like your current marketing efforts are systematic and well planned out, or if you feel like you're just sort of always behind the eight ball and and being haphazard about it. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Once I can, I'm also uh, my email is Kyle McAdams sixty two at gmail.com. Thanks for that, Kyle. So we've we've built our funnel. We're we're getting the we're building the awareness of who we are. We're adding value because you mentioned we're providing value. We're not just saying, hey, I need some work, but you actually have a white paper or maybe something useful that are or yep. you're doing a presentation. Um, yep. where do we go down there and then how does that turn into the pipeline and, and what what is the system that we're talking about okay. here? Fill me on on the rest of it. Um, well, you know, in the marketing world, we call it the marketing pipeline. It's kind of like the funnel. The funnel is more descriptive of where people are in the, 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 the uh, thinking about you, how people think about you, how people know about you. Now, the, the pipeline is really sort of tracking all the people you talk to and realizing which one of them are, you know, cold customers, warm customers, or hot customers. And uh, if they're hot, you want to be all over them quickly. If they're cold, you don't want to bother them, but you want to let you want you want to remember who you contact and who you've said this is not a person I want to contact. Could you could you take me, Kyle, as you're as you're walking us through this pipeline? Could you use examples from your time working with the school districts? Maybe is there a story or two there that you can give us a real world example of how this sort of works in reality? Probably not the school districts because realize I wasn't. <laughs> Any anything, any of your past experience. I think most of you probably are aware of AIA contract documents. Because yeah, I, we think, all... I think we've heard of those a few times. Yeah. And if they're abroad, then they probably still know of them. If yes, in indeed. England or Australia. Uh, and uh, I had the pleasure of uh, being the head of uh, marketing and sales for AIA contract documents for three years. Um, and so I just mentioned them, and so we've got this great – awareness builder in that most schools <laughs> across of architecture across the nation uh, use them in their curriculum uh, which is great thank you schools continue that and uh, um, so we would have a pipeline of trying to sell contract documents to them lead generation is the starting point of the pipeline um, and sometimes you can buy lists of uh, potential customers Sometimes you can gather names, but somehow getting people that you know uh, might have a chance of being in the world of consideration that you would consider as clients at some point in time. Um, so we think about the lead generator, uh, and that can vary by profession, but it's I think one of the best lead generators possible is if you can provide some information that somebody really can find useful and you, you get it to them for free. Uh, what When I was with the, the contract documents, one of the things that we found really useful, um, you know, we all studied them when we were in school, but, you know, by the time we start our own firm and we're a new architecture, a new architect going out, uh, we may not remember everything that we need to remember about the contracts. Um, and so we, give, we gave uh, uh, education sessions on the contracts by webinar, uh, at, you know, at our convention, 
at various uh, local chapters across the nation. Um, and the people who would attend, uh, we would get their names, um, and we could market to them later on. But that, that was a, a very intensive way of doing it. What we found is if we do um, webinars and we can you know, project them to the masses, realize we were uh, marketing nationally, um, we can describe, we, we found ways of describing the uh, relationships between all those contracts um, were more easily understood when we would make diagrams of how, you know, A104 deals with, you know, a107, or I'm making these up, like I can't remember them off the top of my head. But there's, they're all really describing relationships between an owner and an architect, an architect and a contra, uh, architect and a um, consultant, uh, an owner and a contractor, a contractor and a subcontractor. Um, but they're all different kinds of contracts for whether you're doing design build or design bid build or, uh, integrated project development, um, and they all work in a system together, and they all refer to each other, and it's just hard to keep track of all the contracts and the relationships that they define and where they go to. So we developed, uh, because architects are visual, we developed diagrams that uh, described all of those, and people found them incredibly useful. So for us, when I was you know, the head of marketing for the contract documents, we, and you can still get them, as a matter of fact. If you go to the AI website, you can get the contract diagram booklet that I created, but people would love those, and they would, you know, give us their uh, email address, uh, and we would, they would be able to download, we'd, we'd email them the download link, and they would get something useful out of it. We would get a contact, and we would know, oh, you're obviously in need of contract documents, or at least in the awareness uh, world, and so we had a pipeline where we could say, where do we get these um, these uh, names and contacts? And if they came from uh, the, the uh, diagrams, we knew they were probably pretty hot. Um, if they just came from stopping by our booth at a trade show, maybe not so much. If we just bought them, that could be really, you know, that's the last ones you get to if you get to all the other ones because it, it could be, they could have no interest whatsoever. But you, you contact all those people. Some of them progress further down the pipeline and get to be, you know, hotter and hotter uh, uh, potential clients, and you keep track of how you contacted them, which uh, sources of the, the lead they came from, and so you can begin to realize which are my best leads over time, and uh, you also begin to realize when did I talk to them, what did I talk to them about, what were their uh, responses, and if they're hot, you kind of can tell yourself, when do I get back to them? Um, if they're a cold client, maybe get back to them never or maybe once a year. If they're somewhat warm, you want to somehow contact them and be in the conversation, you know, three months, six months, set up whatever your, your contact time frame is. And if they're hot, you want to talk to them uh, a lot and make sure you are in the conversation of uh, being purchased or being talked to. And I'm talking about this pipeline, and I want to, and this is the, the one thing I, I hope many of you will be able to look into, uh, maybe you already have, uh, is uh, so salesforce.com. Um, we, everything I'm describing to you in the business world is called uh, customer relationship management and sales leads and sales pipeline. And uh, the company salesforce.com is, has built their whole uh, existence around managing that pipeline. And they have uh, software and tools available I mean, they're in the cloud, so you might not even have to download anything, but just manage it from the cloud for as low as, like, uh, I've seen it starting at $5 a month. And you can add more bells and whistles onto it so that not only are you tracking your your, uh, your leads, but at certain stages in that lead process, automatically, Salesforce, you can develop emails to send out to these folks, and it's tracking them for you. And they, they can track their responses and all their contacts, and you can add on other uh elements that allow you to uh, track content, uh, comments in social media so that you can really carry on the conversation on an ongoing basis with potential clients. And then once they become clients, uh, sort of the ongoing um, discussions you might have with them. But it's really, it, it, it's a, something that has built the process that you basically can just plug into and manage on an ongoing basis. Um, you know, it, it is another expense, but you know, I, I 
I'm, I, for one, is uh, uh, I believe in the notion that you get what you pay for, and your time is worth more money than anything else. So anything that I can uh, buy that can help me manage it more effectively and uh, work my business more effectively, like Salesforce, like contract documents, um, like, uh, you know, uh, QuickBooks, um, those are things you need to think about investing in. But to your point, the pipeline is a process and an ongoing discipline that you need to manage um, just as much as you manage your designs. Excellent. So tell us what are the key metrics or the key indicators along this pipeline that architects should be looking at to develop, that whether they're keeping track of it via spreadsheet or whether it's Salesforce.com or a CRM. Give us a quick overview of how, how you know, what, what things should they be? Is it like, you know, I called this person on this day, send myself a reminder in two months to call them again? You know, what kind of things should they be setting up? Well, I mean, it varies. It varies by, you know, are you talking about homeowners? Are you talking about school districts? Um, do school districts have uh, regular meetings? Uh, is part of your, your touch point going to this meeting uh, on a regular basis? Is it uh, following up with the people on the school board on a regular basis. You have to set those things up for yourself. There's no, uh, I, I can't give you any, any sort of uh, definitive time frame. Um, it, it really varies. But it's, it's really trying to figure out what are all the key touch points for all the potential audiences. And if it's an audience that you don't think, uh, basically what, you, what you're doing is you are uh, prioritizing your time. Right, it's basically saying I need to put more time on the clients that I think will be uh, paying me someday, and those that aren't, I still want to, you know, keep engaged with them because they may influence somebody else down the line uh, that may have uh, make the decision to hire me. So, for homeowners, for instance, um, you know, a family may decide, you know, we just wanted to get a builder house because it's all done and ready to, to go, but we really like you, and you've, been, you've helped us so much in figuring this, this thing out. They may be the person that says, hey, we met this really cool architect sometime. It's somebody that you haven't even made the contact with. So it might behoove you uh, to touch base with those people, even though you may be thinking, they just bought this, you know, I'll say Shilohi Builder House, but <laughs> uh, that's the architect in me. Um, uh, uh, but you know, but you never know. They may want to make a, 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 a renovation of that house at some point. But they're probably not the ones you want to be contacting on a regular basis, as opposed to the ones that maybe you set up a booth at a uh, a home and garden show, right? And they came up and they you know, saw your work and took your name down and said, you know what? Well, we've been thinking about uh, you know renovating our house, but I you know I don't know how we get the money. And, and they go away, and maybe you come across, I just found a way, a great financing tool for uh, customers. You can call back to them and say, hey, um, not pushing or anything, but I know you, had, you were looking for uh, financing problems. I found this great financing solution. You know, whether you hire me or not, doesn't matter. I just know you were looking for this. And all of a sudden, you're a hero. You know, you're not asking for anything, but you've solved the problem. It just so happens to be uh, a solution that... Uh, makes them more likely to come back uh, to and hire you. But because you touched base and kept uh, kept yourself aware of what their problem was and where we are on the solution in, in the where they are in the uh, pipeline, um, you've just been disappointed about cracking it, but uh, you've been ready from the time came to uh, reach out to something of value to them. Excellent. So that's the pipeline. Any any last parting thoughts on the pipeline that you want to add? Kyle, before we move on to another question? Yes. yes. The, the, some of the most important part of the pipeline is at the end of the pipeline. When you've already, uh, uh, you know, worked with people and, uh, and they're happy clients and you've moved on to something else. You are going to look for new clients, but you still need to stay in touch with the one that you already had because, one, they're going to be the ones that are going to do the most marketing for you word of mouth wise on an ongoing basis. So you want to touch base with them because they may say, oh, yeah, I almost forgot. I just talked to this guy, and I said I was going to give him your name, and I forgot, but here's his name, and you might want to follow up on it. So, so following up on those clients and making sure, like, hey, you know, is everything good, you know, anything I need to fix or, you know, anything you want to add to or 
And, you know, maybe even ask them, say, hey, if you have anybody who's looking for an architect, you know, you know who, where to send them and uh, arm them with that. Uh, so that's really, that's covering the pipeline in a couple minutes. But uh, awesome. hopefully that's so, uh, so the end of the pipeline, a follow-up system to make sure yes. that you're reaching out to people you've already worked with. Now, Absolutely. just just some some parting thoughts. Are there any sort of you know you have an audience here? You're you're able to you're speaking directly to architects across the world right now. You mm -hmm. know, are there any mistakes you see them making that you wish you could just say, man, you know, I just wish that yeah. I could help architects and just give them this little this little pointer about what they they can do better. Yeah, I would say uh, construction manager. Be there, do it. That is when the client is really, they, you know, in the research I've done, that's where the client is really saying, "Oh yeah, this is where the architect should be." Whereas, you know, architects and, and many many architects are like, "Well, the design's done. I hand it off. I'm going to go do something else now." To the client, that is when the architect is most important to be there. And the most uh, unhappy people, the most most people who have bad feelings towards architects about like, yeah, well, you know, what, what good do architects do are those that got bailed on, what they felt like they got bailed on through the uh, construction management process when that's when they were expecting the architect to do most of the good. So your, your, your most effective part of marketing is actually being around during the construction management process. And one, you're making sure it gets done right. Uh, but two, you're really uh, solidifying the relationship with what is going to be your biggest fan and your biggest word of mouth promoter uh, from here on out. So that's an important time to be there. And don't think of it as, oh, you know, what a pain in the butt. I got to go out and think about it as like, you know, getting my next project. Right? When I go and make this person even happier, I'm basically uh, loading the pipeline for my next project. But too many architects walk away and. I've, I've got the research that shows this is what is the biggest pain point for uh, homeowners uh, or other kinds of uh, uh, clients. That this is where they really, the architect can really earn their money. Uh, it, it all depends on you know how you view it, uh, but I see it as uh, marketing and customer management at its best. Excellent, I love it. Well, I just want to just want to. You know, thank you for coming on the show, and you know, point out to our audience that this is an exceptional opportunity to have a very highly paid and highly experienced marketing consultant on the show. Basically, appreciate your time. You're giving us basically this free con con uh, conversation. So, for those people listening, I mean, this could be worth thousands in your business, if not more. And so, there's there's a lot of value to this conversation, and we recognize that, Kyle, and we appreciate that, and we thank you for bringing us that value. My pleasure. Um, you know, I think that. I think just the moniker of your show, the business of architecture, speaks volumes. And you know, when I came back uh, to work for the AIA, it's one of the the uh, one of the uh, soapboxes that I stood on was that architecture is a business. I mean, we're lucky in that it's so cool and we design such great stuff. But at the end of the day, it's a business, and uh, we need to treat it as such. Excellent. Now, if Architects want to go out there. They want to find some books that can help them kind of brush up on their marketing. You know, where, where can they go? Do you have some suggestions for books that we should be checking out? Well, um, you know, there is a sort of a Bible to you know, market, right? And it's like all the business schools that I've, I don't I want to say all of them, but the most used and most referenced is uh, Philip Kotler uh, on marketing or marketing management. Um, I think he was a, a professor at uh, the Kellogg School at Northwestern, but he's really thought of as the guru of marketing. Um, and uh, I would highly suggest that book. There's another book, and I think he may have wrote this one too, uh, called Building Strong Brands. And uh, it has less to do with uh, something like architecture. It has more to do with you know sort of classic brands, but it does really go through the discipline of uh, of creating your strategy before you go out there and promote, of selecting the right customer, of realizing what your point of difference is, of how you position yourself. And people say positioning, realize what positioning is saying is it's the statement you're making to the customer you want to provide. You don't try to be all things to all people. You solve a specific problem, uh, and only people with that problem um, you are addressing. 
And uh, but that's a key decision that is, is part of the strategic process that he's really good, Cotler that is, is really good about explaining. Um, and you know, sort of the self-analysis you need to go through to figure out who it is, what's your brand, and who you're serving. Okay. So the first one I have is Philip Kotler, Marketing Management. That's on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it now. The other one, Building Strong Brands. It says here David Aker. Does that sound familiar? Yes, yes, that's right. It's, it's actually Aker, A-A-K-E-R. Um, yes, correct. David Aker. Both, both, both thought of as gurus in the uh, marketing world. Excellent, excellent. I love it. Kyle, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for the, the time you put in at the AIA yeah. promoting the interest of architects and the interest of the, the AIA. We appreciate that. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for being on the show. All right. Take care, Andy. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. And that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture. To get more resources about how you as an architect can raise your fees, land the projects you love to work on, and get the time in your day back, join the members-only Business of Architecture Insider list for free by going to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash free. Enter your best email address there, and I will send you instant access to free resources, including my book, Social Media for Architects. If you'd like to discuss a thought or insight from today's show, visit businessofarchitecture.com slash podcast. On that page, you'll also find my notes from today's show and the action items I took away from our conversation. Until next week, keep rocking and go conquer the world. views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help architects conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5. Do it anyway.